Let's have a look together at a feature that was introduced recently, the capacity planning. It actually goes hand in hand with the workload feature as well as all the other dashboards. And it's pretty handy in a few specific cases. Let's have a look. Okay, let's dive right in. What you see on the screen is actually our demo space. So we have some fake data, fake project, fake people to show you how that capacity planning feature works. The first thing is where is it actually located? It's located within the reporting tab right there. It used to be only for dashboards, but now we have access to more things. If you click on create, you're gonna see three things. Regular dashboards, the one you knew already about probably. The workload view, which is actually called universal workload, which is basically a workload for portfolios, but not for portfolios, but really for the entire account. And then the capacity plan. If you click on capacity plan, that's going to take you to an empty capacity planning where you can add project or add people. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump right back into an existing capacity planning that we've created with uh, actual data. Okay, so let's go into this one. So this is what a capacity planning looks like when it has been filled with data. There's two ways to look at capacity planning, project or people. The whole idea of the capacity planning is to define who's going to work on what and by when, but at a very high level. When you talk about Asana, we often talk about who is doing what by when at the task level. In that case, it's actually at the project level. And you already know that you have the ability to create project and add members within project, but it doesn't really give you um, the workload of people, the capacity of people. It doesn't count as work. It's only a way to say that someone is a member of something. So that is actually the missing link. The capacity planning allows you to say this person will work on those projects at those dates and that's roughly how busy they're going to be. And I think the roughly is very important here. Let's have a look at the people tab. Uh, you can add new people by clicking on the add people button right there. Once you add people, they show up in the list. They show up uh, empty. For example, Michelle, when she was added, had nothing. And then the idea is to expand those people and then add project to allocate work to them. Note that the project you add there are real project. They have to exist in Asana. They can definitely be shell project. That could be an Asana project that is completely empty. Uh, and sometimes when you forecast something uh, for the future, you don't have the tasks yet, it's too early. So you can really create that empty shell, click on add project to allocate, and then search for something. Uh, the Paris one was already added, but like any project that you have uh, can be added, like AI roadmap, for example. Once you add a project, it adds a, a line within the capacity planning. And then the goal is to actually add those pieces. Those are called allocations. So you can basically say, based on time, how busy someone's gonna be regarding this specific project. And there's two ways to say how busy they're gonna be. You can give uh, hours or you can give percentage allocation. If you look at hours, it's uh, actually a custom field that you can define right there, like estimated uh, hours, that's the one. So right there, you can see how many hours uh, people are gonna be working on those projects. So if you add a new slot right there, you can click and you can add like six hours and you can say that they're gonna be working six hours on this project for this specific week. You can also toggle to project count. And that's interesting to see how many project people will handle at the same time within the same time frame. And sometimes it's important because you have limitations within your team on how many projects you can handle. And sometimes you're so far away in the future, like six months from now, uh, you need to know how many projects that person will actually handle because it's still very early and you can already move things around and attach uh, those different projects to different people. So what you see right there is actually the sum of what is within and you can uh, get some details by uh, ho hovering uh, over uh, those uh, segments. And you can also go into, sorry, that's the one, uh, percent allocation. So in that case, uh, it's gonna tell you how busy someone is based on a capacity because that's the only way to actually get something uh, to work in terms of uh, allocation. And the capacity is actually stored right there. It did capacity. That's where you can say, how busy people can be 
over or what's the maximum. In that case, it's 100%, but if you toggle back to the estimated hours, you're gonna see that the capacity actually changed. And that's something, I'll do that again, that's something very subtle, but things completely change when you change this value right there. For example, if you look at there, uh, you can see percentage right there, you have 50%, but you can also see some hours, right? And when you change back to percent allocation, you see the same thing. But the difference is when you add new values, for example, if I add a new one right there, if I put a number 23, that's gonna be 23%. If I remove this one, delete allocation with the right click, if I go back to estimated hours, if I click again and I type 23, it's gonna be 23 hours. That's very important because it's actually not the same thing at all. So the same interface is used to mix percentage and hours. And you can actually see it right there. You have 50% and then you have a couple of hours right there. So that's a, that's a big difference. It's important to realize the, the difference here. All right, so that's the people tab. But there's another way of looking at things, which is the project way. If you look at this tab right there, you can see the same data, but looked at from the project angle. So you look at the different project and you look at who's gonna be working on those projects and when. So same data, but different angle. And again, you can add some specific people uh, to that list. And you can work from one or the other, or you can toggle between the two. That's not a problem at all. One last thing I wanted to share with you is a very good news. Those uh, features are actually available within the Asana API. It's called allocations. That means you could use some external automation or script or code or whatever you're using to create those different slots of allocation. That could be quite handy, especially if you have many projects and many people involved. As you saw in this demo, the capacity planning does not replace the workload. It doesn't replace uh, any dashboard for that matter. It's really a dedicated tool to do some forecast planning with a big granularity around a project and people. Let us know if you want our team to record any other demos on any other specific features. See you around.